So one of the challenges that we had was, so we used different tools, um, you know, discussion forum, blog posts, some Twitter. This is fairly standard stuff. But we also try to meet online once a week because I think this, you know, synchronous meeting is quite important for social uh, support, for kind of feeling that you're together with other people, you're not just isolated. Um, and we have a challenge finding a tool that's really helpful to us. This is uh, something called Big Blue Button. It's an open source version. Uh, it's similar to Adobe Illuminate or Con uh, Adobe Connect or Illuminate. And the problem with this tool is that it's very presenter-centric, right? It's one guy who sits there, has the video, and then you can put up the slides, and the other people can ask some questions. But it's not very suitable to a group where everyone is at the same level, and we want to have a very equal exchange. Also, you know, when you do the voice chatting, let's say you have eight students over one hour, each person can just talk for maybe four or five minutes, and you have to listen for so long. You get very disengaged. So we ended up, because um, P2PU has its own server for something called Etherpad, which is this editing, uh, it's like Google Documents, and they also have this chat. So the students just start using this chat because they feel like, now I can type all the time. I don't have to wait 55 minutes until it's my time to talk, right? But the problem with the chat is that when you have eight people chatting, you would get lots of different conversation. And when someone say, yeah, so who are you responding to, you know? And it, it gets quite confusing. So the, almost the last meeting, you know, I said, it's funny, we have all this white space here, but we're not really, it's supposed to be for editing a document, and the chat is supposed to be for collaborating on the document. But I said, we're not really using it, we're just crammed into this little corner. And so uh, this is how it started. We had some big document that someone was... Uh, was editing, and then here was just some old chat that someone glued in. This is just a document, right? And then someone said, hey, maybe I can, and, and the color is depending on who is talking. So someone said, hey, maybe I can ask a question here instead of here. And then someone said, okay. So I can answer his question, but at the same time as I'm asking his, answering his question, somebody starts writing here. And suddenly we have a threaded chat where five or six, you see, at the same time, people are writing in different threads, right? So there's five or six different conversations going on at the same time. And you don't have to choose one, because you can quickly read what they're talking and add something, you go down, because you read very fast and you write slowly, right? So for that kind of group, it's actually very good. And in the end, these guys wrote huge amounts of, this is just half an hour, right? They wrote all this stuff. And... It was, an, and, and so one thing is how much did they produce, right? Another thing is the feeling. Usually when I'm in a phone meeting with lots of people, I feel very bored. I feel very disengaged. In this case, everyone was typing like crazy and reading and typing. And it felt like you're playing some computer game that's very fast and all the monsters are coming towards you, you know? So at the end, they said, okay, I feel exhausted. I feel overwhelmed. But I also feel excited. It was like a rush, and I think, you know, that kind of excitement is really important in a distance course because students often feel, you know, disengaged. They feel there's no intellectual excitement. And especially for our course where we need that motivation, this was a really important thing. So one thing which would be interesting to do in the future would be to think about ways to modify this environment in different ways to support explicitly that kind of chat and maybe do some analysis about... For example, comparing this chat to a transcript of a, of a voice chat and see how much are they saying, who is talking. Is there a difference in the depth of discussion because you can easily refer back to what was said before, which you cannot do in a voice chat, right? There's some interesting research possibilities.